Hi, I'm Dr. John Wang. I'm a vascular and endovascular surgeon with Advanced Vascular and Endovascular Clinic and Panasia Surgery. Today, we're going to talk about angioplasty. Doctor, what is angioplasty and um, when is it recommended? Angioplasty refers to refashioning the artery. Uh, and it's commonly used to treat narrowings in the artery where there's blood flow reduction. Mm -hmm. uh, this blood flow reduction can actually cause limb threatening or life threatening problems. So, angioplasty refers to uh, the technique where we use a balloon mounted catheter, it's inserted into the artery, advanced to the area that's narrowed, and we inflate the balloon to stretch the narrowing to its original size, thereby increasing blood flow and restoring the flow to the limb or the organ. So what are the benefits that I could get from this procedure? The main advantage of angioplasty is its minimally invasive nature. It can effect changes just like open vascular surgery but through just a needle stick. And the way it works is that because there's no large incisions on the patients, uh, there is less pain experienced by the patient and the downtime for the patient to recover is actually minimal. Are there any risks for angioplasty and stenting? As with any vascular surgical procedure, angioplasty also has the risk of bleeding, bruising, and also inadvertent clot formation due to instrumentation. And this can lead to early failure or recurrence of the narrowing. Uh, angioplasty also requires uh, the use of x-ray and contrast. Uh, excessive use of contrast can lead to kidney injury. However, this is rare and thankfully most patients recover fully. Are there different types of stents used? Stents are scaffold-type devices that can be implanted within the artery to keep the narrowing from closing back down on itself. The simplest stents are open-cell stents where it's a wire mesh that's rolled into a tube configuration and then crimped so that the profile is small enough to be inserted through the artery. And once advanced into position, we let it deploy and efface such that the narrowing is kept open. These stents can also be impregnated with medications that will reduce the likelihood of it closing back down again or recur in terms of the narrowing. Now, covered stents are impregnated with a film which is waterproof to allow only flow within the stent itself. Larger covered stents are used for treat large arteries uh, such as aorta and treatment of aneurysms and these are sometimes called endografts. Would I be needing a stent or angioplasty would be just as effective? Usually stents are required if angioplasty alone is not adequate. For example, if after repeated angioplasty and the vessel still does not stay open, a stent is usually required as a scaffold to keep the vessel open. Other cases where you will need a covered stent would include bleeding, where a covered stent would bridge over the area where the artery is disrupted. And a covered stand is also needed in conditions such as uh, aneurysms, where the risk of rupture is then addressed. How long do I need to stay in the hospital then? Depending on the nature of the treatment, it can be outpatient, same-day surgery, or it may require a few days hospital stay. For example, angioplasty for hemodialysis access typically are outpatient procedures. For more complicated procedures like leg angioplasty, we may need to admit the patient overnight just to make sure that they don't run into other complications because they tend to be medically complicated patients anyway. Treatment of endovascular surgery for abdominal aortic aneurysms typically will need anywhere between one to three inpatient stay. How long after the procedure can I go back to my normal routine? For most of my patients, most of them get back to their regular routine the same day or the day after the angioplasty procedure. Are there any limitations after the procedure that I need to take note, be it for short term or long term? The more complicated angioplasty procedures such as leg angioplasty will require two to six hours strict bed rest to reduce the risk of bleeding from the excess site. The true long-term limitation of angioplasty is its durability, meaning that it may not last as long as open vascular surgery. However, there are other adjunctive treatments such as drug-coated balloons or drug-eluting stents that can be used to mitigate this early recurrence. Moreover, recurrent disease can be treated with angioplasty in the future, once again, avoiding the need for open surgery. What are the follow-ups that are necessary after my procedure and what do I need to do? 
Patients will require follow-up with their doctor, initially in short term, in about one to two weeks after the procedure, and eventually in three to six monthly periods. Periodically, we will need to have uh, some sort of imaging, such as ultrasound scan or CT scan to assess the flow situation. Patients will also be educated and trained to assess the telltale signs whether blood flow is good or if there's a problem where blood flow is poor. What are the signs and symptoms that I need to be aware of post-angioplasty? Signs include bleeding at the excess site or bruising or swelling at the treated site. Pain is never normal and pain can be an indication that the treated portion has clotted off again. For this reason, uh, most patients are started out on blood thinning medications. Now, it is important for patients to know that blood thinners themselves come in different forms and different strengths. And blood thinners, they themselves can cause other bleeding problems, such as long bleeding time when you have a small cut or nose bleeds. What are the different types of angioplasty? The commonest form of angioplasty is what we've discussed earlier, which is plain old balloon angioplasty or POBA, P-O-B-A. Balloon angioplasty can also incorporate medicated balloons, and these are called drug-coated balloons, or medicated stents, and these are called drug-eluting stents. Arthrectomy is also an endovascular technique, which is based on angioplasty, which is to debulk the thick narrowing that's present within the vessels, followed by balloon angioplasty or stenting. Angioplasty can be used to treat different parts of the body, including the carotid or neck arteries for stroke risk reduction, coronary arteries for treatment of chest pain or heart attacks, mesenteric or intestinal arteries when patients experience pain after eating, renal or kidney arteries where narrowing can cause high blood pressure, lower extremity arteries for limb salvage, and of course, also hemodialysis circuits that malfunction where we treat arteriovenous fistulas or arteriovenous grafts. So how would I then prepare for the procedure? Patients are best prepared by counselling via vascular specialists in terms of the indication, the risk benefits, and the post-procedure expectations. Patients who need additional anesthesia such as sedation or general anesthesia will also require to fast overnight, usually for about 8 to 12 hours. How is the procedure then be performed? Angioplasty procedures are performed under sterile conditions and will need sophisticated imaging. Common venues will include a hybrid operating room where the most sophisticated imaging is available. Alternatives include a cardiovascular lab, such as the ones that are used to put coronary stents in. Alternatively, we can also use a regular operating room with a mobile imaging system. All procedures are performed with anesthesia on board and can vary from local anesthesia, intravenous sedation or general anesthesia. All procedures are performed through a needle stick, therefore there is minimal discomfort. Mm -hmm.